Hey everybody, it's Chris. Welcome back to the uh, collection tour, equipment tour. This is part two. We're gonna start with the supers in part two because we left off with the fleet lines in the last installment. We'll go all the way down here and not necessarily start in chronological order, but start with the little Super 44. This one is a 1957, which was the first year for the Super 44. Uh, Dad picked it up at an auction in Ohio, but it supposedly had come out of um, Ionia, Michigan, and the build records ended up showing that. So it was a Michigan tractor, which is kind of uncommon. Most of these uh, Super 44s, they were they went to tobacco, tobacco country for the the most part because they had that offset design. They were great for cultivating. Essentially, a copper copy of the Farmall Cub or A. I'm not as up on my Farmall models as I am as my Olivers. And um, if if you were looking for the serial number tag, which this one's missing it, there's normally a plate that goes over this U-joint. Of course, the first time someone had to replace the U-joint, they never put the plate back on. So a lot of them are missing their plates. But there is a serial number tag for the engine. And uh, the Floyd County Museum can reverse out your uh, engine number and, and figure out what serial number your tractor was. So this one is kind of unique. The rain cap because uh, it does not have hydraulics um, and the build sheet showed that that's the way it was built uh, normally there'd be a hydraulic unit here for three-point hitch off the back remote cylinder um, then they had this bracket here for mounting a cultivator and it's just one never had it and I'm not sure what the heck they did with it they have there's a PTO on the back And just a regular draw bar and um, so I'm guessing PTO work tucking little things around um, I, I beyond that it's just speculation I just don't know what they did with it uh, but back in the 40s and 50s Oliver had a dealer advisory council and they listened to their dealers what what products were working what they wanted what they you know try to find new markets and everything and the dealers had told them they wanted a small compact tractor to come to compete more with the Ford uh, 8N, 9N, those style tractors. And the guys at the Battle Creek plant, which is where corn pickers and stuff were made, supposedly did some work on this and uh, put together a prototype and they showed it to the dealers and their dealers like, no, no, that's like a farm all. Um, we want something more like a 8N, which later led to the Super 55. Um, so this was kind of put on the drawing, or this was in the early 50s. And so this one was kind of just uh, shelved. And later on, there was enough uh, demand, they felt, from people, that are customers, the dealer network, the dealer advisory council, to go ahead and put this into production. Um, at that time, uh, South Bend, Indiana, where the plows were made, there were actually two factories in South Bend. And number two is where they made these at. And Oliver sourced the engine from Continental. Uh, the Clark transmission was outsourced. Axles are from Clark. Uh, Saginaw steering box. So pretty much about all Oliver made was sheet metal. They probably had a supplier for the gas tank, to be honest. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, they probably made some of the axle parts. I'm not even 100% sure on that. So really, wasn't a whole lot that Oliver made themselves for this tractor. Um, so it made it a relatively, I don't know, cost controlled one. They knew what their costs were going in since you, um, they were buying everything from suppliers. I've often had people say, uh, why'd you take a farm all and make it look like an Oliver? But no, this is an Oliver tractor. They made about 750 of these Super 44, so they're a pretty rare tractor. Um, I don't know, 10 years ago, the prices of them were getting pretty high, but I think the pretty much every last one of them ever built somehow or another found its way out of the tobacco fields, the hedgerows, whatever, and and got 
brought back to life and so the price has settled down on them some uh, it's a friday here and everybody's riding their harley by my place anyways so that is the super 44 um i do have a video of me driving it around here i'll put a link to it up here Up next, the Super 55. These were introduced in 1954 and originally had green wheels, and that's uh, something of a, a question often asked is, should my Oliver have red or green wheels? And honestly, I guess it's your tractor, you can paint it whatever color you want. But when it comes down to being, uh, if you want it to be like it came from the factory, you kind of need to know your build date. Um, because the Oliver sent a letter out and any tractor shipped from the factory as of January 1st, 1957, were to be painted with red wheels. Uh, Oliver's model year started November 1st of each year, so they were making 1957 tractors starting in November 1st of 1956. Those tractors were painted with green wheels, but if they were still at the factory, they had a large area where they parked these tractors as they built them, they didn't all get shipped out the same day, um, so if your tractor was still at the factory on January 1st, they rolled it back into the field or the, uh, into the plant and, uh, repainted the wheels red. And so there are red wheeled supers that were, there are green wheeled 57s. There are red ones that are not what they called an improved super. And like uh, this super 55, um, some of the things they did when they improved it, cause that's what this one is. It's a 1957. Easy way to spot is the word Oliver stamped in the fenders. Oh, the hydraulic unit was redesigned, uh, had what they called a double feedback uh, three-point hitch. They moved the hydraulic filter up front here instead of off to the side. You can still kind of see where the casting was there. This is where the filter used to be. And let's see. Um, and let's, uh, key switch became regular equipment uh, when it was an improved, it was factory 12 volt battery for both gas and diesel. Prior to that, gas engines were six volt, diesels were 12 volt. They used, uh, the diesels used two six volts in series to get 12 volts. Um, Super 44 was, even though it was a 57, it was still only available as a six volt tractor. So that's the exception there. This one, Oh, a customer came in looking for a loader for his 550 and he had this Super 55 and it had a loader on it and years ago he had been plowing with it and something gave up in the transmission. He drug it into the barn, bought a 550 and it sat in that barn all those years. Had about 3,300 hours on it, I think it was when we got it, when it, yeah, when he uh, had trouble with it and so we had a loader off of the hydraulic loader for a 550 we were no longer using we sold him or actually we traded him uh that loader for this non-running super 55 that had been sitting in a barn forever it was rusty greasy and we stripped it down i did i personally did pretty much all the transmission work uh i like to tell people my blood is in that tractor because i nicked a finger working on it and a drop of blood fell in the bottom and i left it in there and uh but what happened when he was plowing uh, on the, pin, or the uh, differential gear, the gear ring gear was held on with rivets and they had trouble with those rivets. And um, shortly after these were built, they switched to bolts. But if a rivet had popped out, then the rivet could slide out and then it would hit the gears next to it as it came around. And that's what happened to this one. And it jammed the transmission up and it broke teeth off from the, the different or the pinion shaft and the differential. So after we got it, I did some tinkering with it, got it running, and, and it would go a little ways, and then it just grind because of those gears uh, being stripped out. So we had to tear the transmission totally down, go through that, and uh, let's see. And then the engine had 3,300 hours on it. It was in good shape, but we went ahead and rebuilt it. Uh, the crank was in such good shape, it just needed polish. It still got standard bearings in it. 
Um, but we did upgrade to 550 pistons, so uh, Super 55s were 144 cubic inches. Um, they increased the bore for 550s, up, and so they were 155 cubic inches. And that's what this has in it now is the bigger pistons and sleeves, mostly because we just that's what we had on hand. Um, this one does get some use. It's gotten a couple hundred hours since uh, we restored it. Uh, I've mowed yard with it before, but the main thing now, I got a chipper shredder that I keep on the back of it for when storms come through, stuff like that. Just keep the yard cleaned up. Handy tractor for that. Put some hours on it, keep it running. Up next is the Super 66. It is a, um, I think this one's a 55, if I remember right, E model year. You'll notice the green wheels. It, uh, that would be the right color for that. It's uh, from when the Super Series was introduced in 1954. Management decided they were just going with green wheels, getting rid of the red altogether, other than, you know, highlights in like the word Oliver, the lining on the letter, the, the name plaque. And I'm, I've never really heard an official reason. My guess would be uh, cost control, one less color to stock and all that good stuff. And customers were not happy. They like their red wheeled supers and it still goes to this day. A lot of the red wheeled supers you see at shows really should be green wheeled ones. But like I tell people, it's your tractor, you paint it however you want. Um, so we restored this one back. This one appeared just a, <laughs> less than two miles down the road for a sale on a corner and um, don't really know the history on it but dad went down and bought it and drove it home and uh, didn't have to do much to it mechanically ran good um, tires were shot oh my god they just uh, I took the tires off then I took the beads off they were that bad <laughs> I was amazed they made it down the road but um, it was only two mile drive so I guess dad was willing to risk it but cleaned her up good and uh, painted it up, and that one was a pretty quick restoration. Like I say, no overhaul, no transmission work. It doesn't have a hydraulic unit. It's just got the mechanical power lift. Push while the engine's running. Now it's powered off the transmission, so it doesn't work when you got your foot on the clutch. But push this pedal, and this swings around, pulls a link, and runs your uh, cultivator up and down. It does have PTO. This one's still a six volt because it's. Like I say, it's uh, 55, 1955. Oh, you could get belt pulley on them, uh, but it seemed like in our area by this time, belt pulley was kind of getting to be on its way out. Um, this one hadn't run in a while, even though it'd been all restored up and the carburetor got gummed up. I got it cleaned up last year and got her running again. Four-cylinder engine, basically the same engine as that Super 55 over there, although the Super 55 ran a little higher RPMs, so they had a counterbalance crank in them, and these did not. Could get them in narrow front, wide front. Um, of course, these are Charles City tractors. The Super 55, the Super 66. On to the Super 77. This one is also an improved Super um, with true red wheels, a true 57. Um, like I say, some of the 57s were not improved. They didn't have the word Oliver in the fender there. Nice little way to dress them up. This one has key start, 12 volt, uh, even though it's a gas which makes it nice. A little easier to swap batteries around. It's been, boy, I've used this one some and it's been, oh, well, I think it was like 90, winter of 91, 92 when we restored it. So got a few hours on it since restoration, but I've got a video of it running wheat in the auger last summer for harvest. Uh, put a link up there for that. This one came from a, 
dealer down by Niles, Michigan, Ted's, Ted Wiggins, Ted Wiggins. And honestly, we never should have restored it. Of course, back then, it seemed like everybody was restoring. People didn't care as much about originals. Um, it was such a nice original. Uh, just this one, uh, I, I swear those are the original rear tires. I dismounted them, and the inside of the rims just looked like brand new. It had never been loaded. Um, the story I was told on it is... The dealer had sold it, had to repossess it, and he ended up keeping it on his own personal farm. Ran like a feed grinder with it. So PTO work, not a lot of field work. And that's why the tires are most likely original. I guess I can't guarantee that, but um, uh, what is it? A little over 3,000 hours on this one. And I, uh, we readjusted the valves when, before we uh, painted it up and just everything looked great inside. I, I, I think it's still on the original build. Um, just a nice, nice tractor. Um, even like uh, the decal here on the, uh, the Ride Master seat, we actually covered that up. That is the original decal for that seat. This tractor is in such good condition. We didn't have to rebuild the seat. I mean, look how good those bushings and shafts were and so like honestly I, I sometimes of course I wasn't calling the shots but if I knew then what I know now I would not have repainted this tractor just uh as a matter of cleaning it up stripping paint and putting new paint on it so live and learn I guess My dad did this. This is actually a tack cable from a 2135 or 2155. And this bracket is for uh, mounting a light on. Um, I think it's actually for an orchard model. You mount it more on the back of the fender there, and then it's got the holes for mounting a tail light on. But the spacing was right for this tachometer, so dad moved the tack up here on the fender. I think it can slide around here. Yeah, let me see how many hours around. Oh, I guess we're over 4,000 now, 41. It doesn't make the tachometer point the right way up, but boy, when you're running the auger or something, you can watch that PTO uh, speed on the tack real easy and control how much uh, grain to put in the auger, not overwork it or whatever, until when you're loading it down. Originally, it was mounted right there above the serial number tag. So that's something I forgot to point out on the uh, others. It was mounted right there above the serial number tag, which is right above the hydraulic unit on the dash. Another easy way to tell if you have an improved uh, super series tractor is to look at the tag. And like this one, I don't know if it can make out there, but the spec number on uh, early supers was uh, started with a one. Super 77s were 17, Super 88s were 18, Super 66s were 16. When they improved them, did all the upgrades and stuff, they changed that number to a two, the first digit. So now this Super 77, the spec number starts with 27. That Super 66, the spec number starts with 16 because it's not improved. The Super 55 is improved. Super uh, tag on the super, super 66 is in the same place. Your Super 55 serial number will be down here by the clutch pedal. And as you hopefully see, it starts with 25, which shows that it's an improved Super. Next up, I got this plow, which I'm gonna do a different video on all the uh, implements and stuff, but I thought I'd throw the boat motor in here. This is a Commander, and yes, it is an Oliver. In the 1950s, the US government was offering grants to companies that would uh, had made stuff for recreational, campers, uh, boats, boat motors, stuff like that. There was a lot of money to be had. They were trying to promote that and have promote people traveling the U.S., camping, the whole nine yards. 
And so Oliver got some of that grant money and they bought the Chris Craft boat motor and they moved all the production into Battle Creek, Michigan. And they had several different sizes. This is the only boat motor I have. And uh, between not having a boat motor stand and having some wet springs, I kind of got a kick out of uh, mounting it on this two bottom plow. I tried mounting it on the one bottom, but it just doesn't line up right. So when things get really wet, I could fire up my Oliver Commander boat motor and my Oliver uh, Plowmaster plow. <laughs> But that was in the 1950s that they did these, the late 50s. That's kind of why I'm throwing it in with these super tractors. It's the only uh, boat motor I have. And it was the same era as these, as these super tractors for the most part. So uh, kind of fit. Next up is the Super 88, one of two I have. I'll throw in the other one in a moment. But uh, this is a gasser. We sold this one new from our dealership in just make out the dealership uh, sticker there under the super 88 and the interesting story on it i kind of told it uh, there's another video of it from last year uh, running the auger during wheat harvest um, this is an improved super so it's a 57 it could there were some super 88s made in 58 those are few and far between um but yeah got the oil oliver and the in the um fenders and the key switch and 12 volt but we sold this new to a local farmer uh, he always had it on his farm used the belt pulley you can kind of see where the paint scuffed I think he uh, filled the silo with it with a belt driven uh, forage blower and he uh, passed away in the 80s and they had an auction to clear out his inventory and that's when dad went and bought this back and it got to come back to the original dealership. Well, then a few years later, his widow decided to sell the farm and we were able to purchase the farm and farm it to this day. And so this Super 88 got to go back to its original farm. We took it over there. I think I planted wheat with it that first fall we had it. Had the uh, farm, picked some rocks with it, other things. So uh, I just like the story on this one because it, it got to come home twice. Just good running tractor. Good strong horse. Uh, got 15 538s. 57 was the first year those that size of tire was available for Oliver's. And then the other thing I wanted to mention on this one was uh, that greener patch there looked like this over here. Uh, now I got to do the whole tractor, I guess, but I uh, wet sanded, I think it was 800 grit there. But uh, just to show you that there is still color underneath what looks like rust. This is untouched and then I hit it with buffing compound and waxed it after that. And even now it's got some dust and, and a bird left its calling card on there. But how much color was still underneath there so some of these original tractors with a little elbow grease you can really make them look nice it's still got the good old uh i don't know if these are necessarily the originals uh the tack wasn't working when we got it so i'm not sure the hours on this it's got old fire stones on it i doubt they're originals for the number of hours this tractor probably has on it but they're old they got some weather checking, but they hold air and they, they pull. So they're staying on for now. Another thing that changed with the Super Series, uh, this panel here, the name plate that's held the, the grill halves together. Uh, it was red on the Fleetline tractors, but when they went to the Supers, they switched it to green. And even when they went to the red wheels, they still left the background green and the letters yellow. They uh, did not go back to the red. I occasionally see that on tractors where they're painted red. And once again, your tractor, you paint it how you want it. Even has the old AeroQuip couplers on this side. <clears throat> a 
Next up is Dad's Super 88 Diesel. This is a 1956 model. One of the first ones with power steering. Uh, factory power steering, that is. Dad bought this new. Build card showed it was just shipped to South Bend, but it came here. Um, whether they went and picked it up in South Bend might have been. Save a little on shipping. But it was built in Charles City, Iowa. Um, this is another one, of course, nice original because we kept it all these years and But the rage was the paint the paint was pretty faded on it, but after I Think with some work, but anyways can't put that genie back in a bottle This is the uh, people often ask me uh, which is my favorite and I have to tell them that probably this one uh, There's so much history with this tractor uh, first tractor I ever drove. My dad won the national level and plowing contest two years in a row with this tractor and an Oliver plow. Um, just a lot of history with it. And um, I tell people I would sell it right before I have to move my family into a cardboard box. And as you can see, it has a lot of hours on it. We overhauled it. I think that was the winter of 1990. Uh, 9641. That number's got to be just right. It's 9640 something now. So it doesn't have too many hours since the last oil change. I think I changed it right before my daughter drove it to school. Which I can put a link in for that. You've seen this tractor in a lot of other videos. Uh, mostly baling hay. Uh, planting, hay uh, planting a new seeding of hay this spring. Used it for that. Been a while since I've used it on the auger. Gets its work out doing other thing. I'll put the other tractors on the auger. But since it gets regular use, it's always ready to go. Um, it probably only, I'm trying to, but I guess we stamped in here. It had, we overhauled it September of 1990. And it had 85.33 hours on it. So, geez, we've put, about 1,400, over 1,400 hours on it since then. Planted a lot of wheat and soybeans with it in the 90s before I got to that bigger drill. You just couldn't beat the fuel economy of these Oliver diesels. How smooth they run. And I just like running the old equipment. I've created a playlist for this tractor. I don't think I have all of its videos in it yet. Maybe I'll use that for the link. I drove it to school once when I was a freshman. And then my daughter drove it last year. Um, it was first tractor she ever drove. And being a 1956, it'll have green wheels. That's right. Uh, we put, uh, Dad even went so far as he could still get these wedges new from white at the time. And we put new bolts and new wedges in. So they were plated and not just painted silver. Put new bolts in the main hub there. So that's how Oliver shipped them. These were not painted. You gotta think, they they paint the tractor on the line and then they put the sheet metal on it so they could get you know paint underneath and they wouldn't. So they used plated uh, harden or fasteners to uh, keep everything on. This was a factory 12 volt because it was a diesel. One other thing I've forgotten to point out on the, the improved supers, the uh, 66, 77, and 88 was the battery door was changed. Early ones had this smaller door, a little tougher, especially with a, if you had a diesel with two six volts in there, you had to remove the hood to get the batteries in and out. I just use a single 12 volt now and I can get the biggest one I can get that can fit through that hole, it works pretty good. But then they uh, um, changed the battery cover so it came down here and held on with two screws on each side, so a total of four screws. Just made uh, servicing that area so much easier, changing batteries, getting the switches and stuff if you needed to replace anything. But 
I plan on this tractor sticking around for a long time to come. Last up in the Super Series Tour is my Super 99 with the GM 371 two-stroke diesel. This is a 1956 model. Um, it was built in South Bend, or Indiana, at their number two factory. Little tidbit while I'm right here in front of the tractor is these, for as wide, much wider as this is, these are the same grill halves as on a Super 88. The uh, wider nameplate here helps take up the extra gap so they can have a wider radiator in this bigger tractor. My dad bought this off a tractor jockey. Uh, it came from South Dakota. I don't know too much more history on it than that. Um, the build sheet shows it was shipped to, I think it was Minot, South Dakota. Um, I'd have to look that up. But uh, South Dakota tractor. And someone had uh, updated the look by painting the grill white, the wheels white. Other than the rims, I think the rear rims have been replaced probably from calcium rot. And they're kind of yellow, whether they were off a deer or just that's the color the new rims were. Um, but the centers, they'd painted most of the way white. They'd painted all the green over again and painted over the word Oliver. And I was power washing it with my hot water pressure washer. And if with the hot water and the right distance, it was peeling that outer layer of paint right off. The word Oliver came back. Uh, I mean, there's still little bits of white hanging off from here, but took all the white off that grill. They painted over the 99 here on the front of the tub. And I can still see little bits of white here where they painted the letters. It was a... Uh, one of those things you had to be careful. You got too close and these wheels were white. I'll throw a picture in from before I washed it. But got a little too close in a couple spots. Got down to the primer. But it's still got the old uh, tires on it. A little bit of weather checking, but they hold air. They pull. They're old and they're cool. It's got 18 434s on the rear. Co-op Super Power. That's 18 434s. Um, it escapes me as to who built the cab. I don't know if we can get in there with this plowing away. Let's see. Just still has the old ride master seat. There's a the gauge cluster. Someone wrote the shift pattern. <laughs> but, oh, before I power washed it out, this cab was just filthy. They had all sorts of bits of carpet shoved in the holes to keep the wind from blowing in. Um, and they'd gotten dirty and greasy over the years, so I just pulled all that crud out and uh, got her cleaned up. I'm surprised, I'm impressed with how well the air flows through it with these windows. It stays reasonable in here. There's also, that's the old fan still works. I don't have a battery in the moment, but three speed or two speed fan and it still blows air out. Got a bit of insulation that's starting to die foam insulation on the ceiling there, but that's still on. And that, what is it showing? 3,100 on 30 hours. Um, I happened to run into the uh, guy that dad bought this from, the tractor jockey. Uh, at a show a few years back and he asked me if I still had this in the 990 which is over there that's gonna be in the next video and uh, 
And I said, yeah. He says, this was, those were, dad bought the pair at the same time. He says, those were probably the nicest ones he'd ever uh, flipped. Wonder if I wanted to sell them back to him. I said, no, you've already told me that I need to keep them. So I think that's going to wrap up the Super Series Tour. And we're already up probably over half an hour. So uh, I guess the three digits will be in the next video. And um, we'll keep working our way up through. But I don't want to make these videos too long. I know myself that it's kind of hard to at times to find that much time to sit down and watch them. But that's a great thing about YouTube. You can stop and come back later and pick up where you left off. So I appreciate everybody watching and stay tuned for part number three. Thanks again.